It was 1949 in St. Louis, Missouri, and the visiting Chicago Cubs were leading the St. Louis Cardinals 3-2 in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs and a Cardinal runner was on base. At the crack of the bat, Cubs outfielder Andy Pafko, he races in and he makes an apparent shoe-top catch to end the game with a one-run Cubs victory. But then suddenly, things change. The umpire ruled that the ball was trapped which means it hit the ground just before entering the glove, and he called the batter safe. Well, Pafko was shocked, so shocked that he charges the umpire to argue the call, totally oblivious to the fact that the ball he's waving in the air is still in play. While Pafko argues, the two runners race around the bases and both score, giving the Cardinals a four to three victory. What's the moral of the story? Well, life isn't always fair, and the calls aren't always right. In fact, I've got a similar memory from Little League that I'm gonna share here in a minute. But just like the great Chicago Cub, Andy Pafko, many people let the victories of life race by as they complain about the unfair breaks that have come their way. And that's what's coming up next on Thoughts That Pollinate. You know, the crazy thing about it is, the Cubs could have still won that game despite the call. The bad call only made it a single, but the player's reaction made it a home run. And we can learn a couple of uh, valuable lessons from this story. You know, in the, in the game of life, which is something we're all a part of, when things go wrong or things happen that we do not feel are fair, our reaction can determine our future in a, in a huge way. I mean, we can complain or we can stay focused on God and, and trust in Him. You know, God's Word has a lot to say about grumbling and complaining. And it makes it very clear that things don't go well for the person who grumbles and complains. In fact, in Philippians 2, 14 through 15, it says this, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that, they, that, that you may become blameless and harmless children of a God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. You know, if we live in a crooked and a perverse world, a generation, which we do, things aren't always going to be fair and things aren't always going to be right. I mean, bad times will come, bad calls will be made. That's just life. And, you know, we, we will be given, how many know, we will be given plenty of opportunities to complain. I mean, that's what the enemy of our souls wants us to do. But if we allow God, he will turn these situations around for the good. I mean, it's a matter of perspective, and it's a matter of trusting in him. I mean, do we truly believe or do we, do we know without a shadow of a doubt that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose? That's found in Romans 8.28. You know, if we focus on what we have lost rather than, you know, what we still have, things can only get worse. And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to focus on the wrong things. But when we focus on God and his ability to turn any and every situation around for the good, that's the right perspective and will determine our future in a huge way. You know, someone once said, your attitude is going to dictate your altitude. You know, for the follower of Christ, the Apostle Paul gives us some great advice in Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 12. This is what it says. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, there it is again, against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and get this, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, 
to which you were called in one body, and be thankful. You know, when we cultivate these fruits of the Spirit in our life, the, the fruit of love, what did it say? Mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, forgiveness, and thanksgiving. Paul says that the peace of God will rule in our hearts. You know, that word rule means to umpire. Yeah, umpires, referees in this world, they're not always going to get things right. In fact, I remember, I remember when I was in Little League, and the memory is as if it was yesterday, we were playing in the Colonel Town Little League Championship game, and it was between the Kiwanis Club and the Rotary Club. And Philip Nelson was pitching for our team, and I was, I was catching. And David Robinson, he was a really good player, he was up to bat, and he was the winning run for the Rotary Club. Well, Philip was on the mound, he wound up, in came the pitch, the crack of the bat, uh, David hit that, that ball. It was a line drive right up the middle of the field where uh, it goes right through our center fielder's legs. Well, David is racing around the bases and Philip Nelson goes out for the cutoff. He gets the cutoff and he hurls the ball towards home base. It was a perfect throw. I catch it. I place my glove right down in front of the plate, holding it with both hands, and David slides right into my glove. Clearly, he was out. I mean, out, you know. But then the umpire, I won't say his name, I do remember his name very clearly, but he yells, safe! I mean, I was so upset. I mean, we would have won that game. We would have taken the championship. And it was a lousy call, and I can still feel the emotions of it today. I won't lie, it was disappointing, and I was upset. I mean, I was right there. He was clearly out, and we would have won that game. But you know, I got to thinking about that. Just like that call, and Andy Pafko's call, sometimes life is going to throw some bad calls at us, but God has given us an umpire. It's called his peace that comes from trusting in him. Trusting that, that he sees all things and makes everything work out in the end. So let's close our book of disappointments and our book of grudges and complaints and open the book of forgiveness, trust, and praise. I mean, there's just no sense in allowing the bad calls in life to take us out. You know, when you have developed a trust in God and you live life according to His Word, His peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And that's a thought that will pollinate good fruit in your life. Hey, don't forget to like and share. And God bless and have a great day.